Yo, yo, what's going on, world? It's your boy Poncho here. Welcome to episode 16 of the Encore Podcast. If this is your first time listening, this is a podcast for artists, musicians, any creative entrepreneur that wants to take their passion for music and art and turn it into a full-time business. So if that's you, subscribe, tap in with the community. I'm here today with my guy, my co-host, Cruz. What's up, bro? How you Gang. doing, bro? <laughs> <laughs> what's up, buddy? Anyway, so we're here today with No Comment, bro. Um, yo, it's a pleasure to have you, bro. One of New York's most up and coming artists right now. Yes, yo, sir. Your streams sir. have been going crazy, bro. I saw you a couple weeks ago perform live, and I knew I had to have you on this podcast. We were interested, and thank God you were, bro. So it's a pleasure to have you, bro. How you doing today? I appreciate it, man. Pleasure to be here. Doing real good. Um, <laughs> honestly, been waiting for this. Yeah. Like, y'all are doing something crazy for the community and mm. giving artists a voice. So I'm just. I'm ready to talk my shit, you know what hey, I'm saying? Nah, for sure, bro. We've been chop- chopping it up a little bit before, and like, I'm excited to put all this shit on camera right now, bro. Like, oh, so, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, first thing we always ask, uh, we want to get a dive into your come up story. I know you've been making music for a while now. Could you just tell the people where you're from and how you got started in music? Yeah, man. This one, this might be the longest answer you've got to this, because my come up story is kind of crazy. Mm. It's, it's been a minute. Um, so... I really started rapping probably when I was like 10 years old, 10, 11 years old. I, Mm -hmm. you know, grew up like uh, Get Rich or Die Trying Mm -hmm. had dropped. And my sister's eight years older than me. So she was like 18, you know, Mm -hmm. at the time. And I think it'd been out for a few years. Like I'd heard like Eminem and thought like, oh, that's cool. Like I really love that. But I was listening to like, you know, whatever was on the radio and shit. But my sister like loved Jay-Z, loved Nas. And then Get Rich or Die Trying dropped. I snuck that around, you know, my parents didn't really know anything. They're immigrants, so they were like, they didn't even know what like a Walkman really, like what I was what I was doing with that thing. So uh Did they I was speak like, English? No, no, they they they're my parents are smart as hell, but they uh, you know, they 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 like they came here when they were like eighteen. Where are they from? Pakistan. Pakistan? Wow. Hmm. Um but they uh, you know, just were like they worked all the time. Hmm. So like they didn't really, you know, I didn't I, I didn't really have a lot of rules in my house growing up. Like I in my house I did, but like I was kind of on my own. You know, my sister took care of me, my like, uh, you know, after school programs, whatever it was. So I would, um, you know, I was listening. I, I just remember that album a lot. So heard that, wanted to get into music. And um, specifically, like, I know in school they'd start doing like poetry and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I just always had like a really a natural inclination for rhyming and shit. Like just, I would always make it rhyme, always make it rhyme. I was like, oh, this is cool. And then you know, started playing sports and shit. And I was, you know, brown kid, right? Mm-hmm. In like post 9-11 America, like the bullying was intense, mm-hmm. right? And mm-hmm. New York, regardless, bullying's yeah, intense. Facts. And so, you know, I was kind of an emotional kid and I remember like taking it hard at first. And then I just, I would always ask my dad, like, what do I do? He's like, no, do you just need like a good joke to come right back at them, you know? And he's, that that's was always real. his thing. He's like, just that's joke. He's, real, like, he's like, make a, funnier, <laughs> make a funnier joke. That's it. He didn't say like, oh, like it'll be okay. Just make a funnier joke. So I realized like I could kind of spit mm. and that was what it was. So it was like after like basketball practice at like the rec league and then like modified and shit, we would, ju- I would just battle. I'd be like, oh, you want to talk shit? Battle, battle. You know, didn't really know. I, I could curse, right? Yeah, yeah, Um And so I would, I would, uh, you know, I would start battling, and that was really what it was. So I was like battling basically from like ten, eleven. I would start like high school came around. We had this shit called Ignorant Fridays. Hmm. Everybody who's watching this, like, if there's anything you take away from this, peep an Ignorant Friday, Ignant Friday. Uh, on YouTube Friday, if you yeah. want to learn about Austin, New York. Yeah, that's, facts. That's I yeah, up. I was waiting for the Austin shout out, bro. I was like, yeah, we're not going. <laughs> yeah, because that was yeah. so yeah, it was OHS Austin. Yeah, and. When I got there, it was just like we. Would, I would literally like have rap battles after school. I'd, so Ignite Friday, everyone would get light in a mm. circle every Friday. They'd like videotape it, and then every other Friday, or like if there was someone ready to battle me, I would battle. So I was basically doing that, and then you know I really started to fall hard for the ladies. I was like, I love women, <laughs> you know. I I, uh, I wanted all of them, and I was like, I need to really like the rap battling ain't that cool to the girls. I need to start making some music. Drake had just dropped, you know, Best I Ever Mm. Had was out. And so that's when I I took my, you know, Xbox headset and all my friends wanted to rap too because I was the shit, you know what I'm saying? New York, like we had Jada, you know, we had like Locks, all that stuff. But then we also had like now it was like what I think the best era in music, like Joey Badass dropping, Cole, Mm -hmm. you know, like like Mm. Wiz Khalifa, Rolling Papers, Cushion OJ. Yeah, 2009 to 2012, right? That was my high school. So yeah. I started recording music and, um, you know, 
Looking back on that shit with booty cheeks. Uh, <laughs> I feel that. Oh my god! <laughs> I, I, I just I found a folder in my old beats the other day, and I I, I wanted to die. But yeah, <laughs> I know that feeling, bro. <laughs> I know that feeling. And yeah, I would learn it in real time because we were recording all the time. So six months later, I looked back. I'm like, yo, we gotta get this off to scrub the internet. We didn't know how to scrub the internet. Yeah. We was fourteen, so you know, I probably still got some joints out there people could find. But whatever, uh, that would be like my little Jack Harlow moment, <laughs> yeah. you know. Facts. Nah. Fuck Every it. high school artist expected to make it by the time they graduated high school type of shit. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, 100%, like, bro. That like, was like, my whole thing. I was like, yeah. okay. And then like the SoundCloud era happened, right? So that was kind of like fast forward a few years. Now I'm starting to make some good music, right? And it was me and my homies. So like Asening, and one thing I really want to put on for this town, because like mm. I don't want to go too deep into it because I don't want to tell a story that people have their own version of, right? Mm. For okay. each artist. But when I really do this thing, because I'm telling y'all, I'm, I'll look at the camera right now, like, the way I'm doing this, the way we're doing this, like this is not, this is not going to be like no niche thing. Like this is, this is bad boy before bad boy. This is OVO before OVO. Mm-hmm. Like this is, I want to take over some shit. And when that happens, when I'm ready, when I have the funds right, when I can do it right, this documentary on Austin is going to be mm, it, it, a documentary on you know, Austin. I mean, because people yeah, don't bro. understand the, the culture is strong it, in Austin. Like, even outside even, of the music, yeah, outside of the music and fashion and branding of all sorts and all oh, sorts indeed. of that. No. You had Clay yeah. on here, you know, yeah. so I can nah, even, I love you know, that. One of my favorites. Uh, uh, yeah, OD, bro. And even like yeah. the, the, the shit I'm wearing right now, like this is Lost Souls. This was mm. my boy Sam designed this. Mm. My boy Kyle Kesachi, right? That's a superstar right there designed this. That's Austin. Yeah. That's Austin. Kesachi, legend. That's, that's Kayvon. That's hey. Austin. Yeah. So like people don't really get it and it's fine, um, you know, be, but like. That's probably one of my biggest inspirations. Like this story needs. You to know what's crazy? Mm-hmm. Because this is one of my questions I was going to ask you later, but I, I want to bring it up now. Um, we've had a couple of people come on this show and say, like, "Yo, like, if you want to make it as an artist, you got to get out of your hometown." You're saying not nah, show love to the hometown, bring up the hometown. One hundred percent, bro. That's but nice. I do have. I still have a point. You know, that's and that's perfect segue mm-hmm. um, for like the, the continued come up right after high school. So it was like our senior year. And we really thought like that was SoundCloud had happened, like post Malone, White Iverson, you know, mm-hmm. um, it was like Uzi, right? Uzi, like right before EXO Tour Life. Facts. And we were like, oh, this is our opportunity. Because before that, it was the way people, we find music was complex, really, and blogs. And we didn't know how to get on blogs, right? Yeah. We didn't know. And like, if you look back now with the knowledge I have, I'm like, oh, like you either paid for it or like you knew it had an A&R, right? Or you were the lucky, legit one in a billion. That necessarily didn't even have to do with skill. Like just, oh, someone found you at the right place, right time. So for us, it was like, how do we do this? How do we do this? SoundCloud really was truly looking back and knowing right, like that actually was an organic opportunity. Mm. And it worked for us kind of. Like we dropped, me and Ray dropped Yes Please and the like my senior year. And I was at the time, like I was starting to get a little more savvy. I was testing out things I could do with marketing. I had no money. And I was kind of like, okay, if we all pitch in 10 bucks, like we can try this thing, right? And Sometimes we just totally lose it or it would be like fucking bots or something. I'd be like, shit, like this is ass. Like this isn't how I want to do this. So I was like, you know, let's just keep dropping it. You know, 10 plays, 20 plays. Yes, please. Went ran up to like 40K in like a few weeks because again, Mm. everyone was sharing it. Thing really thought that that was, you know, going to take us somewhere. But then I had a choice. I I got into a school in North Carolina and I did want to get away Mm. because at that point in time, Right, my world was just, I, I didn't know, I wanted to see it all. I, I, mm-hmm. I wanted it to be bigger, and I thought, you know, if I can, I, I don't want to waste, uh, that's another thing I, I, I believe in. I didn't want to waste opportunities I had because I knew yeah. some of my homies didn't have that. And I was like, if I can go do this, I can go put on, and that's always been me, for better and for worse, right? Sometimes people don't even ask for help, but I'm just always, I want to be that guy, I always want to be the person that can lift someone up, right? Sure. Um, or offer an opportunity, because I've seen it firsthand. <laughs> I've seen the differences in society that are like, you know, it's kind of like you got a chain on your foot, right? And someone else is getting lifted up at the same time from birth. Mm. So watching that, being kind of in like literally the middle in this town like Austin, where I've been homies with people whose dads are billionaires and homies with people who can got no parents, you know what I'm saying? And like really are on the block every day. Seen that, right? Firsthand, lived that. So I was like, I'm going to go out here. I'm going to do this. I'm going to make this happen. Went to North Carolina, did my thing out there. So that was kind of to your point. Mm-hmm. You know, I was like, I want to see the world. Mm-hmm. But I kept wanting to come back to Austin. Six months in, I was like ready to drop out. I was like, I was mm-hmm. like, I want to come back home. Mm-hmm. I want to be in New York. I hated it. It was like, you know. What'd you hate about it? Really, really like, you know, very like uh, Southern. Um, yeah. I, was, oh, I, yeah. I grew up yeah. a lot of yeah. things about yeah. Southern yeah. culture. Yeah. But like, I'm yeah. just being real. It was like a very white school. Yeah. And like, that's not how I grew up. Huh. And like, I was like, you know, um, 
people were encouraging like all the girls I was trying to trying to get with you know they like dudes who wore like khakis yeah, and po polos yeah, yeah. 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 the vineyard vine yeah. yeah. why we all said that knows. at the same time bro that ass, I went to school dog. in Mississippi bro oh, I, know. Oh, I, yeah, I get it I get it I get it <laughs> Oh my yeah. god. So, wait, yeah. wait, so so my, my question to that though is that I mean maybe the North Carolina experience isn't the greatest example. And I know I'm jumping the gun a bit, but I, I know you've been to LA recording in LA. Mm -hmm. Is that something you would advise like people getting out of your hometown to go to these major cities or should you try and like make the most out of your hometown? I think you can do both. So that's what I'm really advocate advocating for if you have the opportunity, right? Mm -hmm. I have opportunities other people didn't. And I'm not, you know, I wasn't, it's not like a, a, a super wealthy thing, but I know how much, even when you're middle class, how many people really can't leave like that. Mm -hmm. But I still say take the chance because it wasn't always like I went, when I went to school, I made sure I got some scholarship money so I could afford to go abroad. I went to Singapore for six months. Really? And that was the most love I ever got in my music ever. Because really? there is something about New I love New York. Yeah. And that's the reason I wanna wanna do something special for the city. But New York is cutthroat, bro. People Facts. will be like your own friends, like for real, you know, especially at that age when you're young and you're like on, on your bully shit, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like they they they'll wanna put they'll they'll pipe up an artist who's made it before their own homie. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because they're like, yeah. what do I look riding your dick? You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. bro, like you you right next to me, right? It's like proximity should be a, a way to lift people up, but sometimes it's a way to cut people down. And I saw that firsthand, and then North Carolina was just a total culture shock. But I went to Singapore, bro. Everybody looked different. That's exactly what Steely said. Nah, for real. Though. Had, he yeah, he did tours in Taiwan. He said the same shit. He got no love. He's from Nuro. He got no mm -hmm. love in Nuro. But as soon as he was in Taiwan, and it's love. different. They don't have what like everybody in New York's trying to be a rapper. Yeah. yeah. So I go out there, and they're like, "This brown kid is also rapping, huh. and he's from New York." Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. hell yeah, you know. Mm -hmm. And that inspired me. I made my next song that started to kind of pop, which was Whoa, and that was more of like my more boom bap rap shit, mm -hmm. you know, because Yes Please was a little bit more, more of like a gritty, dark, you know, mm -hmm. early like 40 type beat, but like, you know, the darker Drake shit with, yeah, uh, yeah. From, the, from those days. So I was just experimenting with sounds, went there, and then, you know, fast forward, right, um, shit was going pretty well. I was like, I was coming to New York every summer doing shows. Um, and I can definitely get into like all that, right? And like, which is like also leads in the modern day where I've like, I book, like I had a bar where I was like, I booked it, I made the song, I, I performed and promoted. Like I was really on my, like, I hate to bring his name up because like, you know, I don't really like certain things he that comes off in media, but I was on my rush shit, you know, I was on my mm. like, and that's another thing I can go into about like how I had to learn from that about like, when I was trying, that's what, cause that is what happened. I got burnt out. I was like, I was trying to do all my own shit, do it all on my own, do it on my own, be on my own shit. And then my music started, I had the self-awareness to be like my music and even the way I talked and came across wasn't what I wanted it to be. Mm. And I was like, I need to just take time to do music. Mm -hmm. So I paused. What what time what timeline are we talking about right now? So like, this is like right after we... school. So yeah. this is like 2016. 2016 type. And then I was just like, let me take like two years in my head. I said, let me take, and people didn't even understand because people would, I would still freestyle, right? That's another thing. I'm like the best freestyle rapper. Yeah? yeah? Oh shit, I, I have not seen that yet. I might need to Facts. grab my guitar. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, <bro. laughs> like, that, that's how it started because we would yeah. like be in school. We had a lot of, it wasn't just rap, we had musicians in Austin. Mm. We had classes, like we really had some crazy opportunities. We had a class called Give Me the Mic. That's, you know, Dre's what? over there, my, 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 my right hand man. Shut up. Dre. Shout out Dre. Oh, yeah. that's, that's, the, yeah. that's the you know that's the gem right there. We, we'll talk about him. <laughs> I'm seeing that, but um, we would he'd bring out his guitar. We had a class called "Give Me the Mic" where you could literally go up and perform as a class. Like the class was like a class, went, and you just and you just made music for 45 minutes. Really, and then every semester you'd perform like all these like dudes you like had on. Like, we were all in this like Blanco, you know, like Dre, like a lot of people who. I make music with now to this day. We had these opportunities, so we would just be playing guitar, and I would just go off top forty five minutes a day, you know. And then hmm. we would I started smoking and like everything. L rides everywhere. It's just spitting, spitting, and I came up battling. Right, battles was all off top, so I don't really like this like written battle shit because I'm like, hmm. come at like tell, be smart, right? Be like creative, be witty, and so um, so like yeah, so like uh, I kind of lost my train of thought. Um, but like thinking about the um. You know, going back to, to 2018 now, um, I took that break for two years. And what I was saying is when I would freestyle with my friends and I would kind of do shows, still do shows because I could I could just go up top with I'd meet someone to play guitar and they'd be like, yo, you're so good, bro. Like, I got a show. Just come up and I'd go do that. And we would sell it out because I'm also man social. My friends would all come and mm -hmm. everyone was like, you do. Since I started working a regular nine to five job, everyone's like, quit, quit, mm. quit. Go do this. Go do this. Quit. And that's why I was like, 
it was really self, you know, it would give me encouragement. But at the same time, I was like, y'all don't know. Like, this is part of the plan. Mm-hmm. And I would kind of keep quiet about the it. The nine to five was part of the plan. It was uh-huh. for me. Yeah. So I was like, I needed I this it. break. I didn't know. I needed to figure out some of my artistry. And I wanted to not have my back against the wall when I did music. Because uh-huh. when it was, that was how I ran into those situations. I, you know, I was telling you where I was like trying to be like OD on my rush shit, right? Where it was just like independent mm-hmm. artists. You know, I'm grinding. Mm-hmm. Huh, huh. I do this. I do that. And I realized I was like alienating people sometimes. I wasn't really? able to enjoy it. Yeah. You know, I would just, I'd be so fo- focused on pushing the song. I almost didn't care about the song. Ah, damn. So, so what would you say your goals were during the during the breaks that you took? Just focus on myself a little bit. Like yeah. sometimes it's not even like, that's another thing I tell my friends sometimes when they be in the studio like all day, every day, right? Where I'm like, you got to get outside a little bit. You know, mm-hmm. I always tell them like, especially like, be outside a little bit. Like even on some like, you know, go flirt with some girls, you know, like go go have a drink, go be sober, right? That's cool too. Like go yeah. do, just, live just be outside, live life, whatever, you know, try yeah. something different. Because that's content. That's like, yeah. I can't, if you really, in the studio every single day, all you can rap about is in the studio, or are you lying, right? Are you yeah. rapping about something you lived four years ago? Mm. So, like, and that's cool. You know, sometimes, again, there's timing. There's time where I was, like, in the studio every day for, like, you know, high school all the time. A, t- a year in college where I was, like, not going out. But I believed in being outside. I believed in, like, taking time. And I, I also just wanted to figure out more about, like, uh, you know, the songs, how I wanted to approach recording. And then, you know, that was like 2017 when I kind of was like really stopping. It's 2019. It's like two years. I mm. saved up some money and I was like, I'm going to try this. I'm going to do it the way I want to. I'm like, and I also wanted to take that time to learn and do deep dives. So a lot of YouTube, a lot of Googling mm-hmm. and uh, looking at like, what do labels do? What do mm. they do? How can I do it without them? Basically. Mm. Right. But not have to be on it the way I was before, where it was like, you know, just marketing 24 seven. How can I find people? How can I network? Right. Um, so yeah, so that, that kind of gets me into like 2019 and that's when like really all this started. That's when I like started linking with clay, started doing these shows, started, I dropped cooking curry. Mm -hmm. Um, that was me getting in touch with my roots too. I kind of ran away from that for a little while. Right. Like I said, being Brown. Yeah. You know, growing up with that, um, Hmm. I kind of, how important was that step for you? It was huge. Yeah, huge. You know, I credit, uh, you know, I credit my family a lot with that. Um, you know, uh, my shorty at the time, you know, with that. Um, and and they've just really supported me um, in just being like, and, and and people I met, right? I met some dope brown artists. I met like Anik Khan, right? My, my homie Riz, who's like blowing up in film and like, you know, they're busy with their own stuff, but they still gave me like, you know, a little bit of time to be like, we see what you're doing and mm. like introducing me to different elements like brown culture in New York and stuff. And I made that song where it was like call cook and curry, but all the, most of it, my story isn't about being brown. That's mm. just the truth. That's it's not just running away from it. Like my story is like, it's the American story. You know what I'm saying? For good and for bad. It's a New York story. It's like everything, right? Mm. It's, it's, you know, the, 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 the lover boy story. I want to be the main character. I don't want to be token brown kid, you know? Mm. I don't want to make just for a niche audience. But I said, you know, here's, a, here's, a, here's my, my re-entry, recognizing something I never really spoke about. And it worked, you know? People really resonated with that song. That's when I brought Dre in. We shot a video. And we just kind of built off that. And now it's just kind of been another couple years of learning a lot, um, being outside a lot. I, uh, I'd say the last thing in terms of, like, what what got me to this current point was I focused in the initially on like, I can connect with people who can help me with like the marketing because I didn't want to worry about that. And I wanted to focus on the music and I did that. Mm. But then I kind of forgot the original most important thing, which was like, just connect with people, bro, like outside. And it was tough because the pandemic then hit, right? Yeah. And so that let me really yeah. focus on making music. I had time to just do music. But then as soon as that like, first wave started to like kind of be like, it's okay, you can be outside. I was like, that's when I really tapped in and opened my ears instead of always being the guy. I've always kind of been the guy that's like, yo, this is what we should do. Da, da, da. This is, I'm learning because I'm always in the, in the threads, my friends say, you know, I'm always mm. digging mm. in my free time. That's like how my brain works. Yeah. And, um, but then I learned a lot from like Clay. I learned a lot from like, you know, Kyle, Kesachi, Ray, Solo, right? Um, I always say both names because like I grew up with them, you know, so it's like, that's yeah, how I know them. Yeah. And all of them really, when I finally opened my ears there and I saw, and then I opened my eyes, I was like, yo, like, 
there is something about just like just be outside and like be genuine like the way I always am with like friends I meet when I'm just out like drinking mm. just sort of surround yourself around like new hip hop and then once I did I was like yo and it opened my eyes to more talent and then when I have opportunities to like put on a show I'm like yo I'm gonna get everybody here I'm gonna do every you know I'm I'm a, I'm gonna I'm support them and it's really not even with the ten- intention of being supported back mm. but it happens you know and you start to build a community and that's kind of where we're at now and that's why I think we really can start to go crazy. So that's kind of yeah. long story short. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> Yo, there is so much that I want to break down from everything <laughs> that you said. But one thing that you said within the last uh, like two minutes was that, you know, just over COVID, you were, you know, made a couple significant steps in your career, your mentality, your content. So it's like, how would you say you maximize your time during a time where it's like very hard to connect with people in person and and I know that's one of your strengths is really having like a community around you um that you know and knowing that as a strength about you like what did you do during COVID like early stages of COVID that allowed you to have like such a exponential growth within the last couple year or month a a couple months um music first so that's that's the thing for me Mm. I don't think everybody actually has to be like that depending on what you want in life like I think some people you know uh, even if they do music, right? Some people are marketing. Gee, I'm bad at marketing, like really bad. Yeah, you know, I don't you even so. I don't know how to post on on social media and stuff. Like, mm. like I don't. Some people are like really natural. Like Lil Nas X is a marketing genius, mm. right? Mm-hmm. And like I thought his music, his music's always kind of been kind of mid to me. He makes some he makes some anthems, sure, you know, and he's got bread and people around him now. But like, just in terms of how I interpret it, right? Is like that's a marketing genius. And there's other people who see this TikTok rappers and da da da. They're just good at that and they lean into that. For me, like I have other skills, right? That are like, I think more on like my, when I'm on my CEO shit and I'm on my deep dives and I'm good at research, I'm good at learning. But in the art and music, I'm good at making music. I'm really fucking good at making music. I'm a great songwriter, you know, um, I'm great at listening to music. Um, so mm-hmm. I just focused on that because I was like, I wanna make the pandemic was here. What the hell else was I? I was listening to so much damn music. I was like, I want to listen. Yeah. Let me make what I want to listen to. Mm. So I focused on that first. And then I used the free time uh, that I did have to just, again, figure out how I can su- supplement the other. Either ways I can make bread, you know, in addition even to the day job and trying to like keep a day job that could be flexible uh-huh. with like working remote. So I can, and like, how can I finesse my hours so I can maximize how much bread I can make from something that's like, to me, easier to make money off of and then learn as much as I can and then make the best music. And that was just how I divided my time. Hmm. Yeah. Any, any strategies in particular that, you know, you were taking during the time that you would say that allowed you, cause you made a lot of progress over the last like pandemic. So it's like anything that you could attribute, like the recent, like sort of growth in numbers and audience and anything like that. For sure, bro. Um, you know, again, I think, a good strategy is always to just have good music yeah, yeah. Um, and be confident in it. And, you know, it's not a one shoe fits all. So for me, I'm not, I'm not at the stage where I'm doing like mixtape rap. That can mm. really be a great strategy. Drop mm. tons of music. You know, what a ba- little baby do, right? He just dropped five mixtapes in a year, right? 60 mm-hmm. songs, hit him over the head with that. But little baby also like, you know, he knew he was like with, with thug, you know, like mm-hmm. I didn't have that. Mm-hmm. Right. And, um, for me, I had, you know, the people around me, and so I invested in them in the music, and then I had uh, what I learned, and so like finding people you can trust. So a lot of it was like, I would just reach out, and be like, "Yo, do you know how to do mark like research, bro? YouTube and Google, man. Mm. Like that's a strategy." LinkedIn? So, Did you use LinkedIn at all? A little really. bit, a little, little bit, bit, not too much. A little yeah. bit, but not really, because yeah. I need to see, I need to see the value. So I need to like, and a lot of people, you won't even get that first call or email. Yeah. So before I make that, I want to like see. So mm. YouTube was a big one. Like I found this one dude who's like so not a rapper at all. His name was Andrew Southworth. He's like totally opposite of like me as a person, but he was like a YouTuber and he just talked about how he ran his own ads for music with a really small budget. And at first I was kind of put off because like uh, ads are cool. But then I'd be on Instagram and I'd look and I'd be like, I'd see like like Blast was one that always had one for the song I love, Chosen, Blast. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. and every time so I flip up, the sponsored yeah, yeah, yeah. app would oh, always yeah, be yeah. there. Facts. And so I'm hard. like, oh, if he's doing, and I'm like, I got to stop. I got to get out of this mentality. That's probably mm. the biggest advice I'd have, mm. which is a, a, a thing that I really do find a lot in New York, which is that like trying to use money to market your music mm. is corny. And like, yo, mm. bro, like we just go make it off the strength, right? 
bro, like Drake paid, and I can say this, I don't care if like, if he's like, yo, don't, you know, because I'm going to meet him one day, right? If he's like, yo, why'd you speak on this? Like, because Trey Song said it on a Hot 97 <laughs> interview. He paid 15K for that replacement girl, you know, uh, for, Replacement? Um, for for what? Replacement girl. Replacement girl. See, probably, exactly. This yeah. is like right before the come up. So ah, Drake's yeah, whole thing was track. like 2006. He was doing what we did. You know, it was like he was making music. He, Toronto, he was bubbling. He probably didn't even have that, like where he where we are now is probably where he was at the time. And then he met Trey Song's manager. He made a dope song. He invested in the feature. He invested to get it on BT, BET, paid for oh. that shit. Mm-hmm. That got enough clout to where it got to Jay Prince. He played it for Wheezy. Weezy had already kind of heard of Drake because he was do- he was bubbling, you know. He heard Replacement Girl. He's like, yo, get him on the bus. And so, they, you know, then that was 2008. And then the rest is history. Uh, Yeezy, it's in the documentary. He dropped 35K on that through, through the Wire video. I don't mm. have bread like that, right? Yeah. But I'm like, can, what can I do with $500, right? I saved up, right? Let me put that into a song, right? Can I wait? Can I, like, you know, take a, a weekend... You know, no drinks or like, you know, uh, you know, if you smoking weed, not like, right? Like, yeah. I hate like trying to be like that person, like, oh, Nick, and like those people, like, oh, so don't drink <laughs> a, a cup of coffee a day. But, nah, it's, it's house. Real but shit like, though, yeah. with music marketing, you know, if yeah. you really love that, you can put. So that was one thing. I did like ads because people have to like it to engage with it, to find it. Facts. Okay, yeah. So, and he would yeah. kind of, he would kind of, so that was one. And then again, just yeah. finding people. So I'd find like an agency that, and they I'd be like, yo, tell me someone, like, if there's like, a, as long as there's an illegal agreement that you can't share it, show me someone you ran a campaign for. Huh, yeah. And that's something I had to learn from, because I tried it in college. I, I used to flip sneakers. Hmm. So I flipped sneakers and I had like the most money ever, I thought in college. I had like $2,000 once from like just flipping and buying shoes off eBay. And I was so, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna put half, I'll put a thousand dollars. I found this dude on Twitter who said he blew up this one song and I just believed him. Yeah. And I'm, psh, I didn't see that money again. You know, and that hurt. That was like, yeah. bro, that was like in college, you know, I didn't have no money. Yeah, yeah. So, um, well, just to take it back, I think that marketing shit is so major. I feel like so many people are afraid to invest in themselves. So I'm happy you said that because, like, that's just it's just essential. So 100 percent with anything, yeah, bro. Like, yeah. you think any anything you buy or consume or watch, like, people got to find out about it, right? And that is why I do want to show love. I I'm now trying to put my music back on SoundCloud and show some love to that because it was a platform that was like TikTok. Mm-hmm. Like TikTok's a way you don't have to put money into things and can blow up a song. Facts. But I don't really like it because first of all, again, I'm not like Cameron the face guy, right? I'm like, that's not just not what I'm good at. I'm no, no knock on it, right? I'm just not good at it. I tried it. I forced myself to fight through my like I don't I don't want to be on it. I don't really like social media. I actually kind of fucking hate it. Like mm-hmm. that's that's for me, right? I really don't like it. I don't like being on there. And so I'm like not trying to spend my time there. And so that's like a, an active choice I had to make. So that was like, I was like, this, this, mm. this free channel doesn't work for me. But for some people it does. And again, it's also like people are more interested in the video a lot of times than they're on yeah. the song. There's one song. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. a fact. So I love SoundCloud because it was really like, yo, and look at the artist. Like that was the only, that was the next era I cared about. It was like the, the blog and mixtape rap of like the, you know, you know, 2010s. Yeah. And then it was like the mid, you know, 2015, 2016 sound. That shit yeah. was lit, right? And now with TikTok music, it's kind of, that's the wave we're on now, right? It's like dudes who get co-signed and TikTok music. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't really like the TikTok music that much, right? Yeah, Just yeah. objectively for me. Hmm. So I'm trying to be the next guy that like learns from everything that I've done. And then if I can figure it out, I'm still learning, bro. I barely know shit. You know what I'm saying? We're competing with be. labels, right? And I, I'm, if they give me a good deal, bro, like I'll sign. I'm not the type of person sitting here like don't sign, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, but mm-hmm. I learned how to get a lawyer, right? Learn how to read a contract if you can. If you can't, get a lawyer. And then you figure it out because for me, I know they got it, right? I know how they, every artist I like, how many independent are there? None, right? That I really like like that, that I want to be like. Yeah. Yay. You know, he signed. Drake, he signed. 50, he signed. Eminem, he signed. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, even in new school. Like, right, even in new school. Yeah. Doug, you know, like, he, like they all, and then they, they, they built their own shit. And then I want to, you know, do that thing where then I create my label. Yeah. And then I can be like, okay, how, what did I learn? Okay. And every artist wants to be like, oh, I'm going to find the guy that was like me and just pick him up from the, and that's unrealistic. That's not how I'm going to spend my time. But I want to at least have that opportunity for at least the like 15 people I know right in my own goddamn hometown. Yeah. Right. That don't have the time or necessarily don't think the same way I do. So I'm like, again, I just don't want to waste it. God gave me this for whatever reason. Right. So 
they don't do it, I'm gonna do it, and then I'm gonna make sure everyone's good, right? And I'm gonna make sure you get the good contract, right? Because I'm really, mm. I don't really care about money like that, mm. like really for real. Like I, I need it, right, to live, and I need to take care of my family to an extent, right? But I'm lucky Definitely. too, right? Like I don't have my parents ain't starving, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I, I don't really like flashy stuff, and it's cool if you do. Some you need that in the rap game, right? A lot of rappers only make the next hit. You think they you want need that in chain. the rap game? I think. I don't really want to speak on it too much because I don't know that. You know what I'm saying? We see all these rappers blinged out and they make great good music. The only reason I'd say I think you need it is because I see people who talk about I'm motivated to get the bigger chain. I'm motivated to get the thing. And then they make good, great music, right? Yes, like if we want to really get on some philosophical shit, like not. Nah, like we can get into, <laughs> we can get into a whole like talk about economics and like what I think yeah. about like, you know, greed and capitalism and da da da, right? But like in terms of just rap music, like y'all do, yeah. I don't want to speak on, y'all yeah. go get your chain, go get your nice whip. For me, like, I'll still get nice things, right? First check I got, like, I got my Tesla. You know what I'm saying? I did. Mm. I'm not out here acting like I'm, you know, Jimmy two two dollars who's just like living in the in the boons with like you know yeah. like like Warren Buffett in his two hundred fifty grand house forever, <laughs> right? But uh, I don't need the I don't need the multi mansion. Yeah, I don't really need the Bentley. Mm. I don't need that's and that's just me. Mm. So I'd rather I'm okay with being that person who will give up bigger percentages because really what I want. I want my music to be heard by everybody Word. and them to make their own decision. I want my friend's music to be heard by everybody because mm. it's really that good. And it's not every friend, right? And mm. it's not every song, right? That's my choice because that's what I think a lot of people sometimes don't understand from me when they first meet me because they meet me in a lot of contexts where it's like me putting on a show or me talking the way even I am right now. And they're like, damn, this guy can be kind of overwhelming. He kind of got that CEO energy. He got that, you know, businessman. Mm -hmm. But then they hear the music and they're like, it always mm. kind of, Cause people don't understand, bro. I'm like, I live this music shit. Like, facts. That's why I'm happy to tell my story, bro. Because I did this since I was like 13. You know what I'm saying? Younger, seven, bro. Like, I've been rapping. I wasn't supposed to do this. I was supposed to be a good brown kid and go and do like my engineering shit, right? And go do this thing, right? And what did I spend all my free time doing? Hooping and making music, hmm. right? And that is like, so because the other shit is does come easy to me. You know, I am the weird rapper who can multiply two numbers in his head like that, right? I cut. I do the tip faster than the, if it would take you to read the the 18% that they put on the bill. I hate that they do that shit now because I, I love being that dude who'd be at a table with a bunch of rappers and like, you know, uh, I'm not paying, but I'll tell you what that tip yeah. is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, but, just, yeah. Nah, yeah, what's super dope about you, bro, is like just being around you, like you attract people to you naturally just by having like a really strong and like passionate and like really like engaging conversation with people. So it's like you might not need the chain as much as like the next guy does just to make the other people gravitate towards them and take them seriously, bro. So yeah, I definitely want to give you a shout out. You know what that just that reminded sure. me of? I heard, um, I don't know, he, he's in the fitness industry. His name is Wes Watson. Uh, and he says, cause he drives, he drives fucking, um, what the fuck is he driving? He's driving some shit and like, he, he has nice shit. He has, he has a penthouse in San Diego and he's like, I make sure that I wear my jewelry, not my jewelry wears me. And that's just, mm. that's just what that reminded me of. Like, even if you had nice shit, like you would be wearing, it wouldn't be like people fuck with you cause of your jewelry. They fuck mm. with you cause you're you. And, and yeah. you like, if you like it, you like it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? That's like, I have friends who like. Even like Dre talks about this sometimes, like Dre knows cars, bro, mm -hmm. right? My boy Johnny knows cars, like lives that is, they worked on it with their pops when they were like three, four, five years old, you know, like, mm -hmm. so they like cars that much. They want a Porsche that goes that fast. Go mm -hmm. get your Porsche. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, you like are really fascinated by gold and you believe that it's like a finite resource that's going to, you know, be a good investment and you can pass it to your kids. And like, that's mm -hmm. why you really like the chain. Like, sure. Right. And I'm, even yeah. if you don't, like, I'm not really here to judge anybody. And I don't want that to be, like, my, my brand necessarily, right? Whatever. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you don't decide that. I also sometimes think, you know, like, I, I'm not here to force that, right? Huh. People can interpret me however they want to. But, like, that's just how I feel. And, like, again, I personally do believe, like, if you like, if you like watches, right? Like, if you really know, like, you're into the intricacies of, like, what makes Rolex, and you know that dude spent, you know, Three months fucking making a little watch that could just be tell the time per, uh, uh, perfectly, like <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying. Like, yeah, yeah. like I like kick. I love shoes. Mm. You know, mm. right? I love shoes. I like the silhouettes. I think that you know what I'm saying. Like so, like indulge in the shit that you you like, right? I, I just have like a whole other existential thing we could talk about on like a, a different podcast yeah. a different day, yeah. you know, about sure. the, yeah. the world. But well, I, you know what though? Um, I, I do want to switch gears a bit because like, I think that one thing you're great at is just putting numbers on the board. 
whether that be through the videos or through the Spotify. I actually, it was funny because he, he set up this podcast and I'm like, yo, no comment. Where the fuck have I heard that from? And I looked back. It was my uh, Spotify to Discover Weekly. Hey. So, uh, yeah, yeah it was a song fire. you did with uh, Miles Monday. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Facts. Yeah. So, so like, sorry, can you just talk OD. about like just some just basic like how to put numbers on the board 101? Because sure. a lot of artists just don't understand that at sure, all. Sure. Sure. For sure. Um, first off, sh- shout out Malls. Um, yeah, word. That's like OG Austin right there. Like, OD. Like, I don't want to act like I was the one who came up from Austin and that like everyone started making music to me. Sometimes I feel like feel that way, right? Mm-hmm. Even like the way people dress now. Like, I took a, a break from fashion, but I was like the first one, really. But not because <laughs> uh, I learned from, you know, like Malls, Juice Box, like Liam, like these dudes, those are my heroes, bro. They were like, mm. you know, 18 when I was like 14. So, like, right when I started and they were seniors, Malls came and rap battled me when I was like, I think Maul's was like 20 at the time, I was 15. He like came oh, yeah? back to school to battle me. Huh. And now we got, you know, a track together. It's just crazy. Uh, full circle. So shout out Maul's because he's really doing his thing. And you talk about numbers, right? He's, mm-hmm. he's a, definitely a step ahead of me. Um, I'd say that there isn't necessarily a one-on-one. Um, because there's uh, multiple ways to, like, you got to just do the research, first of all, and look into what you, how you want it. Because, like, you could just Google it and be like, yo... I'm going to find some, don't be the person who just like pays for plays, right? Because yeah, that's how you get your shit fucking yeah, taken don't, down. Don't do that. I've watched don't that, that happen. Don't, yeah. don't, right? yeah. it just doesn't, don't do that. And just, it just doesn't matter, right? Yeah. 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 Like, like that's not how you want to do music. Yeah. So, no, so you got to decide what matters to you too and how you want to market it. So like me, the numbers just, it did still take time. Like it, it can feel fast. It's funny how it feels fast to people looking from the outside. For me, it feels like an eternity. Um, but one thing, things, specific things I really did learn in the year that worked for me, right? Running ads. Mm -hmm. right but you have to be on it right so like either you can find someone you trust to Mm -hmm. run them for you which is a gamble Hmm. i learned it right i've spent hours on youtube following these guys being like how do you do it you design the ad specifically artist driven ads artist driven ads ads, exactly and so i'd look at other guys who did it and then you i follow it daily so i spend you know my budget was tight so i'd be like i'd spend a little in the beginning and then I have to look, like, is the song performing well? You yeah. test a few things, and then you'd be like, so some of them I'll, I kind of cut. Mm. And I'm like, okay. It would still grow because if you're linking it directly to your song, you'll get the stream. But that doesn't really matter. You, that's a good thing you brought up, Discover Weekly. Mm-hmm. That's what really started to power my shit, the algorithm, right? It's mm-hmm. always about the algorithm in the modern day, right? So sure. it's like the algorithm on Spotify, the algorithm on TikTok, the algorithm, 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 right? Algorithm on, Spot- on SoundCloud, right? That it was the first algorithm. Mm. So... It's the same thing. It's just discovering new things. So to get discovered, you need people need to actually like your music. That like their algorithms aren't stupid, man. Yeah, These engineers yeah. make millions of dollars to yep. design this. That was one of my questions I had. It was how what what's more important, the music being great or the marketing being great? Um, you need both. You mm. need both. I think that if you want to make money and get numbers, the marketing is more important in the sense that like you can market anything in the right way, mm-hmm. right? You really can. Like there's you've. Uh, y'all listen to enough music to know yeah, some yeah, shit is real sure. butt, yeah, yeah, right? I, like, yeah, I know. Yeah. Right? And, and, and you know there's great music that people have never heard. So that's yeah. like really all the only answer you need. I think that's really the more need. common thing, to be honest. 100 way more yeah. common, for sure, because there's so yeah. many great artists, man. Mm-hmm. Um, so you need both, but that's the point. Like, if you want to make it in anything, bro, you know how I many great little gadgets there are out there, but how many make it to Shark Tank, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, so, and then how many sell, right? Mm-hmm. And so it's like, you need to do both to be the... Like, that's what I care about. I want to be the greatest, right? Kanye knows how to market and has people that do, and he makes the best music. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Drake, I just keep bringing up these guys. Like, everyone's like, oh, where? Like, bro, oh, you really want to get into the, the cuts and be like, oh, this guy doesn't know hip hop. He keeps bringing up Drake and Kanye. I could tell you, I could name a billion artists, but like, those are the two yeah, I the, care that's about. That's the staple, yeah. Because that's what I want to be. Mm. Like, that's, you know, I want to be my own person and own artist, but that's the level. You know, mm. Bruno Mars, that's like, you know, that's like the level. So when I want to be that, I have to focus on both, but, but, in terms of the you know other specific marketing things that worked for me in conjunction was also like a lot of it that was free ninety nine bro was just reaching out to playlist curators hmm. and I spend hours I spend hours every day doing that like yeah like where wow. I will just bro it's like how, you have to the best thing you can do is start to think of how do I find an artist mm. right and so like what I do is like I'll follow playlists right and so some of them will be Spotify curated but a lot of times it'll be like. Just what do I do? Oh, I'm trying to work out. Hip hop workout. I'm mm. on a drive, on a long drive, right? Drive, da, 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 right? I'm trying to shit. chill, yeah. chill, uh-huh. move, right? Type that in. See what comes up first. That probably comes up first for everybody. Keep going down. 
re- oh, they got a name for the guy who made the playlist, but they don't mm. have the contact. See if they got a social media. Mm-hmm. See if they got an email. You could do all this. So I sent out 10,000 emails, man, and I got 50 responses. But you know how much plays I get off those playlists? And it's organic. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to pay nothing, but you got to put in the hours to do that. Sheesh. So that's like, that's some time investment. You know what I'm saying? So that's something I do. Um, really adds playlists because that's what the, al- and then the algorithm feeds it, eats it up because the people that are placing me are only placing me because they like my music. Mm-hmm. So they know their audience. Because that's what matters in the algorithm is the engagement, not just plays. Yeah. Like you'll have people that run up plays and you'll notice that their shit like mm-hmm. goes up and goes down. Mm-hmm. That's like either straight up pay to play, which is like just dumb, or like you're just not getting engagement, right? Mm. So I'll have songs that just to keep like Woman Like You, right? That song mm-hmm. is booming all the time. I'm always getting play on that because it's always, I get a lot of light. And you can see this, like own, you know how many artists I know that don't even have their Spotify for artists? <laughs> like the back end, you know how much you can learn from that? And that's fine. Yeah. Like, again, I'm good at this stuff. Mm-hmm. I know this stuff. So it works for me, mm-hmm. right? If it don't work for you, it don't work for you. Like, you, uh, don't, you don't have to. But if, you, if it doesn't, so you either just got to try to learn it. And if yeah. you start hitting a wall where you're like, this is messing with my brain to the point I feel like my creativity is being hindered, mm-hmm. then you got to find someone who can uh, do yeah, it for hire you. Someone. Yep. That's how I feel about graphic design. I'm never doing that shit again. Anyway, but. Uh, <laughs> I got to yeah, uh, do the same thing. <laughs> That's but nah, I'm, I'm happy you said that too, because like I, I feel, I mean, I know this for a fact. Like I'll have people hit me up, and it's just like, yo, bro, do you know like the type of people that like work with me and rock with me? Like your music's not gonna fit with this. So you do like I'm happy you mentioned the like finding people that'll actually match your sound because well, I think fit that's is important so important, too. bro. Yeah, I ain't gonna win over you know mm-hmm. Chief Keef fans. Yeah, I love Chief Keef. Mm-hmm. I start listening to music every day. Yeah, but like if you're that's your main music you listen to. I make like pop records, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? But like, I bet people who like Jack Harlow like my shit, right? I bet people who like Amine like my shit, mm-hmm. you know? And you have to have that self awareness, or you don't, right? Again, then you would find other people. Yeah. So that's always the trade off, right? It's like, Facts. do you have the self awareness and skill? Are you willing to invest the time and do it? And if you are, you keep pulling on that thread. And that's just what I do. Then I tried, I was like, you know what? I like, and then I'd like, again, it wasn't a lot of bread that like you can only save up so much when you're paying rent and like, you know, when you're trying to eat and you're like still going out and you still like, you know, fucking with girls and you know, that shit mm. adds up. Yeah. So like it's, you know, you, you, the budget would run out and then I would do the free, free shit, right? The pure free play. So he's still, I'm still doing that the whole time. I'm trying to be on Instagram. I'm trying to be on TikTok. But then again, that was a thread I pulled. Down. I was like, bro. The more I post on TikTok, the less I want to make music. That is the worst feeling. As soon as I felt that, I stopped. And you know what? Now I only post things that are like pre-made videos that like my editor does or like a, a videographer I fuck with. Like does a video, I do a 30-second cut, right? Mm. If it takes me like two minutes, sure. But like me getting on there and being like da da da, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. just not me. Okay. You know? But sometimes mm. that works for people. So if you got no bread at all, right, and you're really not trying to save, then you got to do the free 99 shit and maybe that'll work for you. You know, and that it's like, again, it's like, maximize your strengths, you know, like invest in what you're good at. Like if you are that personality, if you know, if you're super savvy on social media and your shit's always booming, then just run and run with it. You you can blow up and not have to pay for nothing. You know, um, mm. I'm just not, I don't even know how to make like short form content. Mm. I don't, I'm aware I can watch it and be like, let's see what pops, but I don't, Yeah. you know, look at like Drake. Drake's never on social media. He don't tweet. He don't really post. He don't. He, that was never part of his game. Mm. But Drake paid to have that feature that he needed. He mm. got into clubs and performed. Right. He spent mm-hmm. money where he needed to. He, him or the label paid for radio. Right. Mm-hmm. Because he had radio hits. Right. So I mm-hmm. got to figure out what are the things that I'm going to spend my time or my money on because that's mm-hmm. yeah. who I am as an artist. Again, he's another one. I just see so many parallels. Like Drake was in people. Drake was in Les Mis in high school. I was, you know, oh, yeah. in Les Mis in high yeah. school. Like I was, you know, I want to do acting. You know, mm. I did acting. I was almost on Skins. Oh yeah, which is just the you know was the British version of Degrassi that that came to the U.S. Right, a little more intense. So like literally, mm. I've seen these these things in my life just keep happening that are just like telling me this is what's meant to be. And so, just paying attention to the signs, and that's part of what drew me into the things that I market. And have chosen to do for myself. Nice. But to, to tie it up, like baseline ads and, and trying to get on playlists is like a great recipe to just start getting your. And that's why I I I'm 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 trying to build my own. 
at the same time, I'm like, I even can see, I, I, you know how much game I give people, I tell this people, this what conversation we're having, I've had a million times mm. with my friends, but I just realized, again, I'm like, no, but you, you don't want to do it this way. But, so you know what I did? I made my own playlist. And I shared it on social media and I literally spent like $2 a day on ads, but targeted the right. I was like, oh, this is a New York playlist. I'm target New York. Da, da, da. You know, learned things I've learned over time. And it got like, you know, 120 followers off like a $20 budget. And now, you know what's happening? Every one of those artists that I'm putting on that are all people that I fuck with, everybody's getting streams. Everyone's, Fire. I see people who have no streams. That's not their most streamed song because it's in my playlist. Hmm. You know, that's what the labels do, bro. You go look it up. You can go, go do a search, find the top three players because that's what I learned. When I tried to find out who, like, who's the curator, Sony, Universal, you know. Yeah. Warner. So, wow. you know, that's uh, amazing. Damn. build it yourself, right? Another yeah. thing that stands out about your brand is that you've had, like, a, a lot of articles and, and things written about you from, like, you know, major platforms like The Breakfast Club. You had Song, Song Trust or TuneCore, right? One, or TuneCore. include you yeah. on it. Yeah. So, like, do you have any advice for getting featured on articles and just different, like, major platforms that sort of, like, highlight people in media? 100%. Yeah. Press, yeah, press is a press, thing, yeah. man. Press is another thing people have handlers for. So some of it's reaching out, you know, like there's places that do free submissions. One huge thing that I should definitely drop is Submit Hub. Hmm. Submit Hub's Submit only word. Oh my God, I've heard so much. So a lot of people don't so, like Yeah, a lot, a lot of people, people don't, don't like it. Yeah. I still don't really like it that much. Yeah. <laughs> because Yo, I heard the, the curators are relentless. The return like, isn't that, yeah, oh, damn, they are brutal. Yeah. But again, that's another thing where I'm like, yo, because I'll even have those moments of like self doubt, right? Especially mm. again when it's in the New York scene and like a lot of people who like the music they're listening to isn't exactly like mine. I'm like, yeah. uh, am I really that popping? That shit, I'm like, yes, I am because I know you see the data. The, like this is my songs, boom, because they're that what people don't, you know, like have like didn't again. It's a sa Singapore effect when people didn't like know everything they know and they're not like your friends that are co. And it's funny how it's changing now. Like people are growing up and everyone's co-signing each other. And I love that energy, but like people who hear my music and just like hear it playing, like really react to it positively. That's why like I knew I had mm. something with the music first and foremost before the marketing for everything, because it doesn't work if it's not. And I'll t I've tested that. Sometimes I run marketing for like very cheap, on shit that's not like my on my home, like just like I'll run it for my homie without even like telling them because I know it'll boost their things mm. and I can see it in real time. I'm like, damn, I really thought that song was good and it is and it's responding. And I got to spend ten dollars on it and it went to five thousand streams. You know, mm. when you spend ten dollars on another thing, twenty streams. Mm. Same thing can happen. I've seen it with my own eyes. Um, but to get back to press, like um, Submit Hub, actually, I got a lot of placements because wow. my, because they liked it and because and because my videos are good, bro. Like. I've invest with like a lot of that was another Perfect. thing. The reason I could invest in marketing, because again, bro, like when I tell tell you, when people think like, yo, he must have these crazy budgets. Like, I'll tell you straight up, bro. Like whole year last year, I probably spent twenty bands on all everything. Mm. That's like music. That's videos. That's recording in the studios. Like I'm because that's how I liked. Like I I don't I don't I've been in the the trap in the studio with my homies, right? And we do that and we record. I like, you know, working with the engineers I work with. I like the sound I get from like a proper mix and master. You don't even need that to blow up, right? Like you mm -hmm. can have poorly mixed music and pop. That's not what I'm, but that's what I like. I want shit that I can hear right after a Bieber song plays and right before a Drake song plays and it's no comment and it's there's mm -hmm. a natural, there's no de decibel, doesn't drop like I'm a uh -huh. sound nerd, bro. Like I want that shit to be popping. And so, Fire. you know, I'll do that. I'll go out videos everything bro that is shoestring man and i released 15 songs on that so think about that that's basically a thousand dollars a song right and hmm. i could put a little bit more into marketing because i had someone like dre like so that's why those you do need people where i'm like our videos should like people will pay tens of thousands of dollars for that type of quality bro like i've seen them i've seen i know the budgets i know the label budget and we do it better and it's only because he's like you know what? You're the one person I'm gonna believe in and do this with, and and do it for you with like my camera. If that's where I pull my favors, right? When I need to get in the studio and get ideas off, I can go to Solo's crib and he's like, "I'll let you use this," right? And that's not a favor for everybody. Those are people who believe in, right? They'll charge for who they need to charge for, right? And for most people, but I'm lucky enough that I had people that believed in the production, so that allowed me to save a little more to put in the marketing. Mm -hmm. um, and so Submit Hub, I'd spend like, you know, some of the videos are really popped. They're really that good. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, Definitely. it's not some, you know, handheld, which can still be a dope aesthetic for certain things. 
publicists and sub- blogs, they want shit that's professional, right? That's Whether you like that or not, right? Yeah. And so I made that. They liked it. It does better than like every artist on the platform. I had the number one, Women Like You was the number one song on all of Submit Hard last year. Yeah. yeah. I have oh, the shit. screenshot and everything. Damn, which one? Woman Like You. Woman Like You? Yeah. And oh, watch wow, the video. Bro. You'll see. Yeah. Like the video, the visual, but yeah. the song is that's also that good, bro. That's another one where it's like people sometimes, you know, don't even, everyone's so focused on like the come up and like getting to that point where you're there and like they'll passively listen that they don't even really spend the time to listen and pause. And I've seen that happen in real time where like, I'll be like, bro, that song's been out for six months, but I played it in an environment where it's like, I'm like, I'll be in the club. I'll be like, yo, and I know the DJ. I'm like, yo, spin my shit. And every one of the same people, I'm like, bro, you heard this shit. And they're like, yo, this you? And I'm like, then why aren't you really listening to my music, bro? Like you're engaging mm. with my stuff on social. Listen to it. Like you think I'm good or you don't. Like really sit with my album for a day, bro. You sit with albums and from pop and artists and then you call it mid, sit with it for a day. Um, so that's a bit of an aside, but like, you know, I um, another thing in terms of press. So Submit Hub was big. A lot of, vast majority have been through that. Um, and then a little bit through a publicist. So I found someone who's like, through right, they they work for a label. They're there. That's a job, right? That PR is a job, right? It doesn't mean they pay to like. That's another thing. Don't do that. Don't pay to get an article written up about you, right? Mm-hmm. Because that is don't just, do that. It's a, it's a bad look, and it's just like it's not. It's gonna get it's gonna get pushed to back pages. Yeah. That's the other thing. I had to like do the. Re- I had people that were reaching out to me. They're like, "Yo, I'll do public. Throw me two hundred bucks. You'll get on complex." Da da da. And then I but I'm gonna be like, "Yo, send me what you're right like doing and like." How does it work? Because if it's a pay to play, like you should never pay directly to get onto something. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? What about showcases? Um, I got a funny ass story about showcases, actually. <laughs> um, so yeah, that, I guess that's it with the PR, right? Like basically, like yeah. the last thing I did was I'd hired like a little PR person. Yeah. And they, oh yeah, mom, not to get off topic. They helped me. They helped me run that. But I got yeah. no. Nah, we can jump right into that because that's, that's basically <laughs> it, right? I really Real only did quick, two things. Any other platforms that you recommend that like yeah, you know yeah, that, help yeah, with marketing, should, publicity, sort of any sort of like you know innovative plat- royalty collection that you use that you know you would recommend to other Love artists? Love TuneCore. I'm gonna yeah. rep that because that's like that's crazy. You, uh, yeah, so that's you're like, like one of the last people to use TuneCore. Everyone's on like DistroKid or uh, fucking United Ambassadors. They're, all, they're yeah. all they're all fine, bro. They're all basically the same. Do you um, use an admin co- company for publishing? Uh, CSAC. CSAC. So, you use CSAC? CSAC? Yeah. So yeah. that's another thing, people, bro. So people just don't know the story, man. What's my story? Crazy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> when I was like 16, there was a sneaker store in Mount Kisco called uh, Secret Society. Okay. Did y'all know about that? I don't know if. If you I've heard of it. I, I, not really it was like the one sneaker also. store in Westchester. Yeah. yeah. Really. And I went there to cop sneakers and I was like a real hot boy at the time. You know, this is when I was, this is when I was like, I was, this is when I was dropping a mixtape a day, you know, and it was with me and John Lowe and, and D-Bad, the same dudes I work with today, right? Solo, Lou, we went out there, met the owners, they fuck with our vibe, da, da, da. I played them my music in the store and they basically just like took me under their wing, man. One of them took me to the like Jada Kisses studio. Jada wasn't Fire. there. And that was like, I remember that was the first time I was like in the, in the booth environment that I don't really do anymore, but where it was like, people were there and he just played a beat and he's like, and I came out with a verse, 15 minutes, bang, dropped that. And I was like, he was like, yo, and I'm, I like that feeling. That's like the competition. Mm. That's like the uh, tryouts for the basketball team. Oh, right? yeah. And so, um, I, I linked with them and they basically took me under their wing a little bit at that time. And I was when I was 16. They'd like put me on to different shit, but he got me on CSAC. He was like, get your publishing right. And that was when I was like 16, 17. Not as Kevin mm. BMI. And nah. So that's the, crazy. that was, cause that's the invite only. And so I got into CSAC and my deal ran out the, three months ago and they, they dropped me for two days. But then I just emailed them like, Hey, y'all might not realize, but like what I'm doing right now, like just recheck my numbers. Uh, and I sent them everything. Yeah. And they were like immediately like, so sorry. Like, uh, get your, you know, oh, you're, you're back in. Uh, so I own my publishing. Um, so that's another great thing. Like I can reinvest. Like now I'm paid off everything. Right. When I get a, I'm waiting for the sync deal, right? That's what really pays. And we can get yeah. into that, you know, uh, uh, in another thing, but but I want to get to showcases because those same guys put me on to showcases when I was like 16, 17. Mm-hmm. And that was the first time I went to everybody and I was like, I think we have even made a little money. We made a little money off, like we had like a, a band camp or something and we made like a few hundred dollars off like our, and we I would sell my CDs in school. I'd mm-hmm. burn them off my disc and I'd, I'd sell them around the school. And I think between our whole thing, we made like $700 in like a few months mm-hmm. after we dropped our first series of mixtapes. 
And we were like, we're going to split this amongst us, right? It was like six of us. So, you know, uh, mm-hmm. but that's a lot of money to kids. And, so, yeah. you know, especially this is pre-inflation. So we had the offer. They were like, it's like $500 to get in the showcase. So we, we did it. And it was just like, we got two shows out of it. And it was funny. It ended up kind of working out because we got pretty good payments from the publishing for the show because I was on hmm. CSAC. So it ended up, oh, yeah. you know, we ended up making like half of it back and got to like promotership. But the two shows we got, and this is again thing people don't understand, especially when they, you know, see me with the blonde hair, you know, and uh, my music, which is like more pop. I'm, you know, I am a suburban kid, right? I'm not, you know, but they don't know like where we went. Our two shows were in like deep in Newark, like mm. right there, and it was like, it was, you know, it was just like all gang bangers, like everybody, you know, what I'm saying like I have friends who bang, and like you know, it's not like a thing. And especially back then, I was like everyone was just so. We didn't, we didn't care, but we were still like these suburban kids pulling mm. up to this spot. You know, it's like odd future. It'd be like odd future pulling up, you know, deep in Compton, right? Yeah. To like, a, you know, like, like, and like showcases are like, everybody just makes like Ace Hood music. So mm. they heard our shit and they were vibing. It was just mad yeah. funny to see like these, gr- and they're grown ass men. A lot of these dudes who do showcases are a little bit towards the tail end of the career trying to revive it. And so these like grown ass men in this spot in New York. And then the next one was like deep in DC. Um, and the spot got lit up like four days after. And we were kids, like our parents, you know, and then we're like, they can't know about this. We make sure they, <laughs> yeah. didn't, they don't Google the, the venue. Uh, but that was the showcases we did. We did two, two, uh, two places that were just like very, we just, like the audience seemed very different than like who would normally be receptive mm-hmm. to our music. But they vibed with it so hard, man. And our music wasn't even that good at that time. Do you but recommend we that other artists pay for showcases? No, absolutely not. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, wow. I... That's crazy. That that's and 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 that's my opinion. Again, like I don't. It could have. I just don't know anybody who it's worked for. Hmm. Um, I think there may be right, but that's only the. Re- I'm only have the research I have, and I only have the people I know and what they've done. Hmm. Um, I. I think that you can. That's more of something where I think you can kind of do it yourself or with your homies. Like, like throw your own shows. Throw your own shows. Because that's what I did, right? And I'm it, not going to lie. That's, that is probably a better route. Yeah. You got it. Someone's got to be business minded to Facts. do it, but that is, probably is a better route. Find that person. I spend more time finding that person because mm-hmm. your group's going to have one, bro. Like people will have one. Like I'll, I'll help. And that's the other thing, bro. Like I'll help anyone, man. That's the thing that sometimes throws me off where I'm like, bro, I'll really give anyone on, I'll give you the connections, right? You just find someone who can run it. Like, I don't even want to run these, these shows no more, right? Like, mm-hmm. I want other people to do them. Y'all can keep the bread, for real. Like, I just want to grow my music, and I just need to, like, not run out of money. And now I'm making enough kind of from the streams where it's like a wash, right? Where it's like, I get the stream bread in, I kick that, because I'm not looking to make, that's the, see, that's like the, the independent artist thing, right? That are like, own your masters, blah, blah, blah. you can make, like, a living with your music, bro. I want the... I don't even want care about making music doesn't make you a lot of and when I talk about a lot of money it's funny because I say like I don't care about I still want to make a billion dollars because I want to give it to everybody mm. you know and I want to build the things I care about it's not to buy shit mm. for me to do that I need to own my label I need to do entertainment I want to invest in tech companies I still want to do all this stuff but I want my music to create it for me because that's what I like to do mm. with my free time because I love music that much and so like I um, I will take the big deal. You know what I'm saying? Like I want the 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 five million dollar deal. So I'll go. I'll go. You know, I'll go even till till it takes that. Right? I can't bleed money, but hmm. I'll go even. So that's where like if the show doesn't cost me anything, bro. Like hmm. y'all can y'all really need that fifty dollars? Is it you know hundred dollars like per performer? Bang! Like whatever we can do, split the the revenue amongst you. People, uh, you know, can vouch for me, right? People who've done shows with me. Everybody eats, and if they can't, right? I'm like, yo, I gotta pay the DJ, and I gotta pay the venue back, right? If if it's a venue that's like that, and so we we not getting paid tonight, right? But I'm not sure, like, and so that's the, basically the point. Like, I know there's more knowledge for people to get where they might not have to go to a showcase. You just gotta be willing to ask or like follow up, like. I've had Facts. people where I'm like, yo, bro, like we've had a lunch on for tomorrow where I'm not getting, like, I'm just, get, I'm willing to kick you not, like that have asked me and they don't show up or they don't like, they, they, they ghost a text and I still don't even really feel salty about it. Truly. Like I'll still have that lunch with you the next day if I've hmm. got time. Right. And my time is just going to become less and less. And like, I really believe this is an interview where like 12 months later, people are going to look back and be like, damn bro. Like this is some shit. I could have, I could have been with like no comment was just right there. Mm not on some like cocky shit even just on some like bro like 
That's why I like that I have this opportunity because I just care about other artists have the knowledge. Like, do it yourself because those, I don't want them to get caught in the money sucking things. To showcases I've seen have been money sucking things, hmm. not helping anybody out. There might be some that do, right? Like a showcase like South by Southwest, sure. Hmm. But then you gotta like, you gotta get the state, you gotta buy out the stage, you gotta put the artists on, you gotta have the marketing ready. That's big budget hmm. shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Labels pay for everything, bro, but they play, pay a premium because they have the money. I know what it's like to work with a $1,000 budget, you know? So I can only tell you what I know. Um, and so that's why, like, yeah, showcase is not necessarily my thing. Um, Interesting. You know, I'd say try to find people who can, you can do shows with. And that's really happening all over the New York. Like, like follow Spliff Happy, bro. That's like an artist I fucking love Spliff in Happy. New York. And Happy. he performs everywhere, all over, bro. And he has a great story and he's like someone who I just met like a few months ago and I genuinely just like his music. And he has like, he just, he, he connects with people too. Like, and he's really someone who just does music, right? Like I, I, you know, it's not like, at least from what I can sell, right? Again, I don't want to tell his story for him, but like he's, he's outside, you know, Clay does that too, right? Juma does yeah. that too. Yeah. Right? Juma doesn't need to pay for a shoe showcase. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, yeah. um, because yeah. You just be outside, you know what I'm saying? And like Word. we've we've done all of this past year, still kind of in COVID. Yeah. So like, okay. if this shit really done and it needs to be, you know what I'm saying? Like, what do you think is gonna happen in these next twelve months? Hmm. So like, if you in New York and you see this, you know, like, fuck with me, right? Us, <laughs> right? I can't promise everything, right? I still yeah. do have people DMing me that I can't put on the bill, and like, I'll be honest, like, if I don't really like like your music, I can't. I can't bring, you know, that's just not me and that yeah. someone else might love it. Don't take that to heart, right? I like what I like. I only bring out artists that I, I don't do favors like that. It's um, a business. That's it's not even, the, it's just like, I like, I want, my business mm. is good music. Like really, mm. like my business, because if it's just a business, I could make money, more money faster doing other shit. Mm. I know I can, yeah. right? But I, my goal right, is for amazing art to be heard. And it's at my doorstep. If it wasn't at my doorstep, I don't even know if I'd care. If it was just me and there were no artists around me, right, I probably wouldn't invest as much into my, like, I would just make the music, I'd kind of put it out, I'd take more of a, a background, I would save that 10K, I'd put that in a fucking ETF, you know, and retire like, two years early, hmm. you know? Um, but instead, I like, this is what I love. You know, so that's why, um, you know, I think of it more as like putting in the time and hours and building this thing because it's the, I say that in my song, like it's, it's easy to do when there's talent around me. Like, I don't even know what the next bar is. I write yeah. too much. I've been writing too much yeah, these days, but <laughs> that bar, you know, um, it's just like, yeah. it's, it's, it's just so crazy, man. It sometimes it bugs me out sometimes where I'm like, yo, bro, like there's people who are so big right now too in like certain scenes that are from Austin too. And like, again, if I don't know them like that, like at this stage in life, I'm not going to like name names. But like when I have that documentary, like people's minds mm. are going to be blown, bro. People don't even, I've mm. seen all the tangential shit fly because I have been in the center of all this. Because like you said, my, one of my greatest strengths is like I am a people person, bro. I love people mm. and I love art. And like that's how I want to spend all my life. I just want to be around people and I want to be around art Thanks. and people I like and people I, I, I enjoy spending time with and I want to meet new people I enjoy spending time with. And so that is everything that I'm pursuing. That may have overheated. Shit. Five minute intermission. Yeah. Yeah. That, was, that, was like, that was like a natural. Yeah. All right, we back. <laughs> Technical difficulties. All right, bad bro. So, you know, you... Okay. Yeah. All right, so, <laughs> so you've had like uh you've been making music for a long time. You've gone through a lot of progression. You've you've touched on a lot of things in your career for so far and learned a lot. Um, last year, late last year, you dropped uh, till next time. So I, I'm interested in this album. Like, what made you drop it at the time that you dropped it? Um, why eight songs? Like, because that's a pretty like digestible length. Why only one feature? Like, what was your mentality when you were dropping this album? Like at this point in your uh, career? Yeah, that's an awesome question, man. Um. So I'd done like a string of singles, which is another good marketing trick. To be honest, you can spend a little more on a single than like an the album. Rough strategy, not the the whole one song a week thing, but like no, taking no. a singles <laughs> route as opposed to albums. Exactly, yeah. like to build yourself, right? Mm -hmm. You can focus more. You can you can add a little time. So that helped me grow my my base. So I had a pretty. I came right. It was one year 
directly until the day I dropped my album, literally like one year exactly from when I dropped Cooking Curry. I had a thousand streams at Cooking Curry. I had, I think like 1.2 million um, by the time the album dropped. So um, that was kind of crazy, right? And so, you know, a lot of growth in the year. I'd recorded a lot of music and the album very specifically um, was meant to showcase like who I came up with, right? My brand... I hate to say my brand, but it's just me. Like, all I care about, as you've probably seen from the interview, is, like, who I came up with and, like, the town around me and my town and my story. And so all the songs are produced by my friends, right, Word. who I, I grew up with, mm. um, all from Ossining. Um, the, you know, Till Next Time is just, yeah, it's like a knowing it's a work in progress, right? Um, because I kind of felt like a finished product with some of my singles i've been doing music for so long and a lot of people didn't realize that because i'd i'd like you know cleaned up some of the music i put out i was like i wanted to kind of like tuck everything and like revault everything hmm. and only keep a few songs out that i was like you know this is really the type of music i want to make now um that i took that little break hmm. and so a lot of, i only had a few songs out right i only had that you know i had like a few hundred thousand streams on soundcloud but like i wasn't doing anything on spotify so I thought I was like, I'm so lit now. I'm making these bangers, you know, I'm making hits. Um, but then when I was like kind of going the album, like I still got a ways to go like musically still. And I think even my, my friends do too. Like we're all working on this together. We're not at that point where we all know like the kick we even, you know, the, the right 808 and the right everything, right? And it's just, it's not like, uh, you know, we're not at the major label stage where you're making, you know, records that are more like, you know, it's gonna be a pop hit, right? Um, I'm not even saying necessarily that that's exactly how I'd want to approach it, but like that's sometimes how it felt in my head. So with it, I focused on my hometown friends and, and the till next time is kind of like, you know, this is, this is for y'all till next time mm. and eight songs. Um, you know, I do like more digestible albums, right? I've been know people's attention spans are kind of short. I wanted something they could listen to in yeah. like one commute, right? Um, one like, long train, like right coming in from Brooklyn into, into Manhattan, mm. um, the way I listen to music, right? I was like, how does this sound when I play it through? Mm. Two songs from each producer, right? Two songs from Jimmy, two songs from Blanco's Next, two songs from Solo, two songs from John Lowe, um, and eight also Kobe. Like my, I, I have an idea of how I wanna drop my albums. I kinda wanna do like a eight song, eight song, eight song, and then a 24 song like, thing that an album I've thought of for like nine years mm. like in terms of how like that's like, like putting the, them together you're saying like I'd want to do yeah. 888 Eight. and, then, okay. and then a separate 24 one that's ah. like at which point I would um that would be the one that I'd really want to do is my like I'd, I'd care more about the album than I would about individual songs, okay, which weird. is like a different approach to making music right which yeah. I, I know artists struggle with sometimes they're like if I approach this as an album I can tell a whole story but it might not have as many bangers, right? Um, and so that's at least what's in my head, right? I kind of, I'm back on my singles right now. I need to continue to grow my stuff. I'm really um, more open to features now. I'm trying to connect, but it's like, I have to be very specific. It depends on the song. That's mm. the other thing. Like to do, I'm not right now the person who's like linking with everybody to do a track mm -hmm. um, because I'm very specific about how I want like music to sound, so it has to be the right fit. And so the one feature I was like, it has to be like a big bro from Austin, and, yeah. You know, someone who's and Malls is the perfect one, right? Sure. Where it's like where I am, where I was now was where like I saw he was like you know two years before, and now like dude's got a song on 2K, and oh, he, he also just makes music. I love, and he's like a real rapper, oh, you know what I'm saying? So also paying homage to real rap because I do make melodic music. You know, I want to make pop songs. I do sing. My biggest song now is like a groovy disco kind of John, but like I grew up rapping, battle rapping, you know? And um, so I had to have, and I wanted it to be fun, like kind of funny where it's like the song I picked malls for was like a joint for the ladies. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I, I and like. so I was like, cause I like that. I like kind of like when, when it's like, like I love like Rick Ross songs on like uh, like Dr when Rick Ross is on like a Drake song, you know, or like mm. I like when if it fits right, like if you mm -hmm. can do it, and Miles can do it, you know. Mm. So I'd rather like, and I'd also rather do that for that for the artist too. Like I don't want to just make some like New York shit and then be like give people you know the malls that they're used to 
kind of always hearing. I'm like, yo, if you gonna come with no comment, no comment, do a lot of joints for the ladies. So like, let's see it. And what mm. did Maul do? He gave me a fucking crazy 16. Oh, right? D. So. Damn. Uh, that makes sense. Last thing, uh, you, you got any more? I got one last thing I want to touch on. So uh, today you brought with you Dre, who has been a fanta- fantastic person <laughs> to chat with today. Like he, like I could tell that he contributes a lot to your team, to you, like just being around him, like the way y'all move together. So I wonder if you could just speak on his value to you and, you know, Thanks. what some having somebody like Dre on your team could really provide to, you know, everything you got going on. For sure, man. Um, you know, my team is Dre, right? Um mm. So I obviously have other people that are, are part of my team now, but like when people talk to Dre, right, it even, it happened today, it happens all the time. They're like, is he, are you his manager? He's, and he's always says I'm his partner. And you ask, you know, you're like, why do you specify partner? And uh, because he's my business partner, man. Like that's like, we do everything together. So, you know, when I first linked with Dre, I'd already recorded and put out Cook and Curry and it immediately started to get a little traction. I was like, I want to do a video. And I was back, a big part of like, why this music thing also I think worked the way it d- did was we were all back in Austining. Like we, even like I'd been in the city, right. Doing my thing and doing music. But like when the pandemic hit, it was like, yo, let me, so the pandemic hit and I was like, all right, I, I'm going to start pushing the music again. And I linked with Dre cause he was home and like, you know, he was out in LA. We were in like, you know, we'd, we'd, we'd been worlds apart for a couple of years, but like I've known this dude since I was like 10 years old and I knew he did, you know, video so that was all it was at first. It was like, yo, let's link on, on some video. But I, I always knew Dre had a brilliant business mind. And basically since then, we did the Cook and Curry video. And he just believed in me, man. Like he really, I mean, I believe in him. to but like, why, why do you think that he believed in you? And I don't know if you want to come on and speak on that, but. We can. Yeah, come pull up, Dre. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, pull up. Fuck it. Please. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, Dre got to put his. His uh his manager jacket on. <laughs> that's, that's the that's the LA jacket that we get deals done on. It's fly as hell. Yeah, no. uh, uh, yeah, we don't. Yeah, uh, yeah, we just we don't got another. Okay. Uh, fuck, hold on. There's a wooden chair right there. Yeah, can you, can yeah I was about up? to I was about to give him a cheek pause. <laughs> But but that's a big dude right there. Yeah, facts. No, can you <laughs> yeah. can you bring it to this side of him so it's in frame? Yeah, facts. And like no no gay shit, but you gotta get close. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro, for sure. Um, yeah, man, what's the question? That yeah. yeah. <laughs> what did you see in no comment that really, you know, made you believe in him? Oh and the vision and yeah, man, contribution. Just, um, I mean it's pretty simple for me. I mean, like I've known him forever. But uh this shit's about to fall. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> Yo, bro, just take the mic, take the mic off. Edit this out, though, because yeah. this shit's about to fall. Um, anyway, you got to cut. You got to cut this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm not like, I'm not trying to be a PA. I'm not trying to be a PA on the fucking interview. Wait, is he in frame? Um, I bet. Shit, yeah. <laughs> I um, bet. Yeah, man. No, it's like Nadi. I've known him for a long time. Mm-hmm. And... um we made music for a long time. Like in high school, we'd made music. That's oh, so I'm sorry. Can and, you talk closer to the mic? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we'd make, sorry, this shit's over right now. Um, we had made music for a long time, yeah. man. So like, I knew that when he came to me and I was shooting some videos for him, you know, I'd been back uh, in New York. Um, yeah, Nadi's one of these few guys that's like, he's prolific. Like you see him, like he can write you a song right now. Like straight, like the bars he can make, like, the mm. thing he's good at doing is making music. Mm. And if he, when he, as soon as he was like, y'all want to be in the music business, I was like, oh, yeah, for sure. It makes sense. Like, for me to be like, I'm going to put everything I got into this, like, at least right now, because I had all these connections and I have all this, like, acumen and all these things that I'd learned to do. And it was a perfect compliment to what he was trying to do. I was like, oh, I could shoot a music video on the low. I have connections all day, right? I can pull shit here and there. And, um, yeah, I think ultimately it just like the belief I have in Nadi is that like he's was that guy that he is now is going to be in 10 years and was 10 years ago. Hmm. It's never changed. So I think uh, it's a it's a no brainer, you know. Yeah. That combined with the talent is like. Yeah, man. And I'm also like, like, like we're a little bit older. You know what I mean? Like I'm I've seen a lot of artists, bro. Mm-hmm. And like I've worked with a lot of people and, you know, he's consistently been been doing it 
figured out every single way to get it. And like we talked about earlier, you're like, yo, some people like want this on some fake shit and some mm -hmm. people want it on some real shit. And like some people are willing to die to do this. Like they'll waste their whole life doing this shit. Mm. Once you realize that like, that's the kind of person you have and that person's talented, mm -hmm. you know, checks all the boxes for someone that you should really watch out for, you know? Facts. And um, yeah, I'm grateful, man. Grateful that I have a chance to like get in on this now and also like, uh, you know, it's, a, it's about having a good compliment, you know? Yeah. Figuring that shit out. But yeah. Yeah. It seems uh, like y'all are an amazing team. Um, it's a pleasure to meet y'all both officially in person yeah, today. Yeah, the first time sure. we all got to meet. So appreciate yo, you. thank y'all yeah, for pulling up on us, Trey. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh real quick, could you tell the people where to find you on social media? Yes, sir. It's um real no comment. We got some fake no comments out there. Wow. <laughs> so real <laughs> real no comment with a K. And that's comment with a K, not no with a K. So R E A L N O K O M M E N T on Instagram, Boom. on Twitter. Um, you know, Twitter is like very rare. You're going to get some rare gems from me on Twitter. Mm -hmm. um, I really try not to be on the socials too much, but that's where you're going to find the music. Spotify is the best thing, um, or Apple Music. Um, I actually used to be a big Apple Music dude. Everybody like acting like they're on Apple Music mm. now, mm. which kind of gets me tight because I was like OG, like. Not fucking with Spotify, but yeah. Spotify got like a better platform for like yeah, reaching yeah, new yeah, listeners. Yeah, so yeah. whatever you want, no comment, N O K O M M E N T. Boom. Uh, SoundCloud, show some love there too, because you know, they really do great things for artists. And um, yeah. you know, just just give me a follow, shoot me a DM, and pull up to a show. Like, uh, I'm all about OD. real life, man. Like, OD. you know, get off the internet. Come fuck with me in person like these dudes. Oh, D. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's definitely a subject for a later for a later interview because, uh, you know, I'd say <laughs> one last thing I want to let the people know is, like, coming out the pandemic and everything, bro, like, really made me realize, like, fuck being popping on the internet. Mm. Like, real mm. life, man. That's what we're investing in. That's what we've built. So, really, yeah. come fuck with me in real life. Come to a show. Come say what's up. We yeah. outside now. Mm. Like, be outside, yeah. you know, real life, man. Like, yeah, yeah, fucking, yeah. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Drop a, drop, 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 drop a, you know, drop, drop a this thing. I don't even know. I'm yeah. I just, all I know is music and some business shit. So, yeah, everybody you know, here accessible, thing. bro. So, oh, yeah. you know. Yeah. And I really appreciate y'all. I thank really want to thank what you're doing thank you for the so community. Because um, people need to pay attention and, and y'all are doing something amazing. Love the format, love like everything, your questions, you as people. Hmm. So thank you guys for having us. No, Appreciate no, you so much, bro. OD. So yo, that's episode 16 of uh, Encore Podcast. If you made it this far, I appreciate you for tuning in. Um, if you're an artist, please subscribe and tap in with the community. We're trying to build this community to be a group of like-minded artists who are all working to strive, working to strive, striving. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> striving to achieve their goals <laughs> and uh, reach their potential in their careers. So tap in and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Peace. Facts. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> That's, right. That's right. Hey, got a little sloppy at the end. Substance wise, fucking fire. That's fucking dope. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just.